Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over question 8 from the Compound Data 2 workshop. Uh, so this is quite a fun question because we're actually um, implementing all of these things that we're learning, like passing an array into a function, um, designing a function, uh, and things like that. So this is quite a fun question and to do this we have multiple steps we need to do. So we're going to plan a lot before we implement our function. It's always good to plan what you want to do before just going straight into it and coding. That can be quite dangerous and you might get some errors. Um, so let's get started. So we're writing a function called n0 subarrays that when passed a two-dimensional integer array returns the number of subarrays that have only zeros in them. Um, so there are two different ways you can go about this question. Um, I might start with the easier way and then have a look at creating helper methods. Uh, so we know that's going to be our name. We know what the structure of a function looks like. We've got a return type, we've got a name, parameters like this. So I'll just have that just to get my structure there. I know my name. And what's my return type? I want to return the number of subarrays that have only zeros in them. So that will be an integer value because we're returning a counter or the number um, of items. Uh, and then if we have a look at our parameters, we're being passed in a two-dimensional integer array. I'll call mine data. Okay, great. So now we'll need to do some planning. So what we need to do is have a look at each individual subarray, work out if that subarray has only zeros, and if it does, increment a counter value that we can set up. So... Let's write some comments to create a structure and create some planning. So create a counter to hold the number of arrays with uh, all zeros. And at the end, I want to return that counter. So I'll add that at the bottom. So what do I need to do? I need to loop through each index of the main array. And then I need to loop through, well, let's indent this a bit, loop through each index of each subarray. And this is where we're going to be doing a lot of our work here. So for each subarray, we need to check if each value is zero. So as soon as we come across a value that's not zero, then we can um, stop looping and we don't need to check if We'll say in this one here, if we've checked this first number here, it's not a zero. So there's no point checking the remaining items in this subarray because we're only incrementing our counter if every item in that subarray is zero. So we need a condition that says um, stop looping once we've found a non-zero number. So perhaps um, we can create a boolean that will have true or false as to whether we've found um, any non-zero numbers. So that would be up here because it will be for each subarray. So create boolean to hold whether we've found a non-zero number. And that could uh, even be part of our loop condition. We can have two parts to our loop condition. Um, and then we need to check if the value is non-zero and if it is non-zero change our boolean. So once we've exited our inner loop here what we need to do is have an if condition to check our boolean um, and our boolean is going to represent if we found a one, so, or oh sorry, if we found a non-zero. So if that value is true, or perhaps if that value is false, um, that means that we found only zeros, and we'll increment our counter. Okay, um, so that looks like a plan. Let's start implementing these bits one by one. So first I want to create a counter to hold the number of arrays uh, with all zeros. So that counter will be an int. 
I'll call it total and it could be zero to start with. And then I want to return that counter at the end. So I'll go return total. I want to loop through each index of the main array. We know how to do that. Um, it's that same loop we've done many, many times. Great. And we need to close that there. Here I want to create a Boolean to hold whether we found a non-zero number. So Boolean non-zero is equal to false because at this point we haven't checked any numbers so we haven't found any non-zero numbers. Okay, then we want to loop through each index of our subarray. So I forgot something, data i dot length. Great. And we've forgotten something here, this loop. We also said that we want this loop to stop looping um, as soon as we find a non-zero value. So we need to add another part to our condition here. So um, the index must be within that range, within um, zero, its initial value, and um, data i dot length. And we want non-zero Or well, perhaps let's let's change this. Let's say all zeros, and it will be true initially. And so when we find a value that um, is non-zero, then we change our boolean to false. And if it's true, we increment our counter. So let's end all zero. Here I can say all zero is equal to true, but all zero evaluates to a boolean already, so we don't need that equals equals true. We'll um, we know that it is a boolean, so I'll just say all zero. So these two conditions must be true for our loop to loop, um, and then we need a condition to check whether this value is non-zero. So I'll say if data i m, if that value is not equal to zero, then I want all zero to be false. So now, if that was the case, if um, the item was not equal to zero, then this would be false and this loop would stop running because um, all zero will be equal to false. And so this whole Boolean, uh, we know that whenever we have an and um, in our Boolean expression, um, that the whole thing, if one of them's false, then the whole thing will evaluate to false. Um, so this will terminate our loop. And now we need a condition here, which we said an if condition to check our Boolean and increment our counter. <clears throat> so if all zero, um, if it's true, then that means that they're all zero then we increment our counter. And again, as I said before, all zero is true. Um, so we don't need to say equals equals true um, because if all zero is false, we've got false is equal to true, which is false. So we don't need that equal sign there. We can just say all zero. Um, and yeah, this looks okay. Uh, we w want to be careful. Oh no, that's okay because each time we loop through the main array, we're entering um, this outer loop. And each time we enter the outer loop, this all zero is being reset to true. So if you initialized, declared and um, initialized this Boolean variable up here, you'd have some issues because you're not resetting it. Um, so it's important to have it here. Um, but if you needed access to it outside the scope of the loops, then maybe you would need it up here um, and you can just reset it here because we know that any variables declared 
inside a certain scope only exist in that scope. So if I declared it here, it would only exist within these brackets and perhaps um, in, any, in a different circumstance where I needed to return the Boolean, I'd need to have access of that outside of this scope. And so having it out here is, I guess, a little bit safer, but um, considering the function we are trying to design, then that's not necessary. Great, so let's double check that this is working with this test value that they've provided us. So let's create, um, this is integer array r equals this. Um, so let's print out, well actually let's assign that to a variable and zero is equal to the output of That should give us three. So I'll go print line um, Let's have a look. Awesome. What if uh, none of them had all zeros? That should give us zero. Great, and what if they were all zeros and of different lengths? We want to create lots of different test cases just to ensure that our program is working correctly. Oh, it should be zero, should be five because there are five subarrays here. Great, um, and because we were careful with how we did our loops and we made them um, dynamic by having data.length rather than hard coding it to five because there are five um, subarrays and hard coding this to two because in this particular case um, each subarray length was only two. Um, we've made this scalable so that it doesn't matter um, what dimensions our two dimensional array has, this function will always be um, successful which is good, we want to create um, functions that can be scalable. It's good practice. So that's the first way of doing it. Another way of doing it would be creating um, a helper method, a sub method, because we can see that this function here, there's a lot of things that it's trying to do. Um, so we can split that up into two different functions so that we have two different responsibilities. So perhaps what we want um, is a helper method that will return true or false um, as to whether each item in here is non-zero. So that would take all of this out into a sub-method. So it will return a boolean, um, we'll say all zeros, and its input will be just a, a, a regular array. Um, because uh, we're only checking a subarray. So what we can do is we can say for zero i is less than um, a dot length i plus plus, and as soon as we come across a non-zero value, if it's not equal to zero we can return false straight away. And if we get to the end of this loop, then we can return true. So this is looping through each index of that subarray. And if that item is not equal to zero, returns false straight away, otherwise returns true. So now what I can do is I can remove all of this here and I can just make a function call. So I can say, um, Boolean all zero can be equal to all zeros, and I'll pass in data i, which is that subarray there. And if all zero is true, total plus plus, um, otherwise we don't. So we could even make this a little simpler rather than having a Boolean value called all zero, we can just put this function call in is our condition. 
So I'm making this even simpler now. And that is a little simpler because it has two different responsibilities. Maybe my function name isn't um, that great, uh, but it's easier to debug now. So this is still working, should be five. Let's go back to our initial one just to make sure that everything's working. So this should be three. Great. Um, and we could definitely have a look at some more test cases, but um, I'm quite confident that this should work. Uh, so yeah, lots of different ways to implement this method. Uh, either way that you do it is fine. Um, yeah, I think I prefer using helper methods just because um, it's easier to wrap your head around what's happening and separate the responsibilities uh, and put your code into modules. Um, I find that's helpful.